Hello, I'm Marty, and welcome to part 25 of the C++ SFML game development series. 25 seems like a landmark to me. Before I start coding, I just want to say that I'm starting a second channel, and it's an animation channel. I will tell animated stories about programming, bus rides, all kinds of stuff. I'd appreciate if you take a look at the link in the description. That'll take you to my animation channel, which the animation's channel name is Marty Mass. Animation is definitely a lot harder than programming videos, because like... I spent like two weeks on just one video. It's definitely higher quality, but it takes a lot longer to do. So I'd appreciate it if you check that out. Link in the description again, and the channel's name is Marty Mast. With that said, let's start coding. Last video, we cleaned up our code significantly, taking out this using namespace SF in order to clarify our code so that this way we know what is a namespace and what is not a namespace, what belongs to what. This is the actual code where we left it last video. You can see that our guy is moving in. Also, we implemented something called a time scale so that this way everything happens at the same time, even if you have a sucky computer or a beast of a machine. We know that our time scale is working perfectly, so we can take out the line where I have to print it out. See how delta time? No point to that, backspace that out. Right, next, let's see if we can get some multiple platforms happening, and let's also see if we can get a camera going, so it falls around our player as he moves around the level. To do that, we need to create an array. Now, an array can be used with any data type, eh? So, for example, our platform class is a data type. Well, believe it or not, it's actually just a data type. And the end of the day, this is just ones and zeros. The same way you declare a data type like an integer or a float, that's exactly what platform class is. It's just saying whatever it is. So if we're going to create a, an array, or sometimes called a matrix, depending on whatever you like to call it. In Python, it's probably called a list. But anyway, to do that, first you have to say what data type you're... That was loud. So if we want to create ourselves an array using a platform class, so if we want to have a pla all of our platforms in a nice little array so we can handle one variable and instead of 50 variables, which is awesome, we're going to have to just say platform class because this is a platform class. And then what you do is you just name whatever you want. In our case, it's level because it is level. Now, we'll open up some square braces inside here. This is important. You need to declare how big your array is going to be. This isn't a dynamic array. A dynamic array is basically, you can add more to it later, is what a dynamic array is. So they don't need to say how big a dynamic array is to start with. But dynamic arrays are, they're a topic for a different video. For now, we can just use implicity. Once we create the level, we're not going to be adding necessarily anything more to it, as far as I can see. So let's just go with 5 for now. Now you have to set it equal to something. Open up some of those curly braces. And it's important to end their lines with semicolons. And now we actually say platform class again and in here this is where we give it all the parameters make sure it's spelled right let's provide the necessary parameters let's just go with a nice 100 by 100 I'll actually go 200 pixels down so we can actually see where it is and earth sprite one is what we call it we'll just let auto complete right add a comma to the end of it be sure it is a comma not a semicolon or anything else otherwise it won't work control c and now what i typically like to do is i like to just tab it out all nicely so it's like a line below it like so it just makes it a lot more readable, plus you don't have a, so you're not scrolling way over to the side just to see what you wrote. So there we go. Paste it five times. Be sure it is five times. You will actually get an error if you don't have as many elements in the array as you told it would be. All right, that's five. Count them all. Five. That's right. Now let's just give each one a different position. So we can go, let's see. I did the math on this, and if we go up here, if we set our scale to seven, my lucky number and if we set our position by an offset of uh, 105 each time then it should work all good so we're gonna have to go 205 310 see math is actually good for something right so that's all done now we can scroll down and right here we're gonna know to draw everything in a for loop because that's the great thing about a list uh, not a list an array and for loops they go hand in hand they're so easy to use with each other so first Let's stop drawing this first platform object image. And did I delete the right one? Yes, I did. That's correct. Okay. And we can also delete this one right up here. There's no need to have duplicate code. And now we can scroll down. Let's create a for loop. So I'll just go for, open up some parameters, and open up some curly braces. Hit enter. Now inside those parameters, create. this is going to create an integer that only exists inside this for loop. So it doesn't exist anywhere at all. So int i, I typically like to go with i, like... If you have multi-dimensional rays, then it, for, it's very common to go I and then J for the second dimension. Which, for now, we only have one dimension that's left and right. A second dimension will be up and down, but that's a bit complicated, so we'll get to that later. I equals zero is a very common starting place. Add a semicolon. Be sure it's a semicolon. 
I always get confused. I think it's a comma, but no, it's a semicolon. Think of this right here as like a declaration. You're declaring this into variable, except it only exists inside this for loop. So now we want to provide a test for it. So as long as if our i variable isn't greater than five, then we can keep drawing this stuff. Add a semicolon and just increment i. Hit enter. Inside here, we can go window dot draw. And as the parameter, here's the cool part, we just go level, open up some parameters, and we just go I. And boom, it's automatically going to draw everything, except make sure it's image, dot image. Let's control save, and let's run it down here. We should run with no errors. We're missing out on a little comma, so we got to scroll back up here. Easy. Where did I forget that comma? Oh, I forgot on every single one. Okay, now that makes sense. Just need to add a comma there, comma there, comma there, comma there. And good to go. Control save. Now let's go inside here, compile and run it. So we've got, okay, another problem. Platform OBJ was not declared in this scope. And um, I'd say you're definitely right there, compiler. It's not. We need to take out that line there. Control save, and that should do it. Now, there's still a lot of platform OBJ stuff going around like here. So let's just fix that a second. The player class is expecting a platform OBJ to exist somewhere. So let's replace it with level. Now you can just go level. You don't need to have any... Although I'm sure it actually does work with the extras here, but it's not necessary as far as I know. So we should be fine. Scroll up right here inside the player class. Now we do need to declare what data type it is, which this is a platform class data type. So, and we can just call this level. And inside here, you do have to say how big this is, which is five. Right, and this expects a platform class platforms. Nope, we've got ourselves a level and it can just exist as I think you need five there. I don't know. Might be wrong. Might be right. I don't know. Copy all that. Just tab it all over. Now right up here, hit enter. And we're going to go create a for loop so that we can do essentially the same thing we did by drawing it. We're just going to do that for colliding. So we can draw and collide with multiple platforms. Open up some parameters. We're going to create an integer i. Set equal to zero. It's very common to see it put it at zero. I really can't think of putting anything other than zero. Semicolon, i is greater than five, or actually i is less than five, and i plus plus. And now what we can do, open up a curly brace here, but not two, just one. And now down here, make sure it's like all tabbed appropriately and everything, hit enter. We're going to have one right here. So now what we can do is, instead of platforms, we can just go control H. It's pretty common, most IDEs control H will replace. So we're looking for platforms and we're going to replace with level and then I. Make sure it looks like that. We're going to replace it, replace it, replace, replace, replace. Yeah, that one. I forgot about the dot down here. There we go. At level I dot image. Control save. And let's see. Ho hopefully that should go. So let's try that again. See what we got. Okay. So our guy is missing. Okay. And there's a bit of a glitch there. So we're probably not drawing our character anymore. Which, no, we're not. We're probably accidentally took out that line. Whoops, a little typo there, but oh well. Window dot draw. Want to redraw, and we're gonna draw the player player obj dot image, and just in that line with the semicolon. So let's try that again, and we should our guy should be there. We should be able to like, see him. Yes, and then he disappears right away. And the reason that is is we're still not colliding correctly because up here we set our own scale as seven. So let's set that back to one. Set this scale here for the platform class set that back to seven and now we need to go down here and right here instead of a four let's replace that with a five control save and that should give us exactly what we want no errors and right on it's working perfectly all right and let's just scale our let's scale our character a second because he's kind of small compared to the rest of everyone so that should be right up here now if we just for some reason we forgot to do the scaling part so we need to go uh, image dot set scale and then we open up some parameters the parameters we want to give it is just scale and scale using actually set scale you can rotate and flip your image a little bit so that might be useful later if you want to flip an image so just keep that in mind and now if we set this to something like let's go with three that should give us a, a fairly big character control save and let's compile and run it and see what we got there we go, that's more reasonably sized. All right, last but not least, like I said, we're gonna see if we can get a camera going in here. So let's scroll up. So one, two, six, zero, I'm pretty sure is a pretty common dimension and seven, two. We're just doing this here a quick second. We're just rescaling this so it's a bit bigger. So we have a little more area to work with. That should give us a nicer sized area. Yes, we do, much, much more better. 
Oh, why is the guy just floating? Okay, close. Now let's see if we can get the actual camera going. So we're gonna want to create something called a view. So SF, it's part of the SF namespace. And it just starts with view. I before E except after C. English is good for some reason too. Like, then you know the little rhyme, I before E except after C. Helped me remember that that's the way view is spelled. The parameters we want to give it is a vector to F and almost parameters there. And for now, let's just set it to zero and zero because there's no specific reason why we would set it to something initially. That's gonna be handled down here where we actually update it. So we can just leave it as zero and zero because you're wondering what the F stand for. It just makes sure it says float, comma, and a vector to it. Now this actually, if the first one is the initial starting position. I believe it starts based off of its center. And this is how big it's gonna be. So we're gonna go with window width first and window height, unless we had a specific reason to go small, but for now, that will do fine. Right, now we want to update this. So right after our player updates, we can set it right here. We can go view dot set and center, the American way of spelling out, unfortunately. Alrighty, and this will just be one vector 2f. Again, vector 2f is a bit complicated way of just saying a mathematical point that's a float that is two positions i'll open up the parameters and inside here we're going to go player obj dot image dot get position that's right open parameters dot x so that's just going to set it at the x position but we want this to be exactly centered on the center of our player so then we're going to go space plus because it starts at the left so we're going to want to add to it is this camera reversed oh well it starts at the left so we're going to want to add half of its width so it's at the exact center of it which will make it look a lot nicer plus player obj dot image dot get local bounds open up some parameters dot width and then we want to multiply that because just this image dot get local bounds doesn't take into account for scaling unfortunately which we can just do by multiplying it by scale and then dividing Finally, all of that by two. Make sure it's a float so it stays as a float. And then we can just go comma player obj because this is the second parameter obj dot image dot was get position is what we're looking at plus and then our and then player obj dot image dot get local bounds then dot oh not a dot yet open parameters and then dot height. I know this is probably an incredibly long line of code, but I can't really see any way of avoiding this. Multiplied by scale. And it can't just be just scale. This has to be player obj dot scale. Otherwise, it's not going to know what scale is. So all that divided by 2 because we want it to be divided by, we want it to cut in half its width. That should do it. Let's just make sure that all of this makes sense and everything. Oh, okay. So that looks all good. And oh yeah, the scale right there, it, it doesn't know what scale is. It has to be a, this is a, a part of player obj dot. Be sure you do have the dot there. So if you just scroll through it a quick second. Right, so I'm just gonna zoom out so you can get all that. Make sure you get all that. Make it full screen, feel free to zoom in on your screen if you need to. That belongs to the SF class or the SF namespace, I should say. And we basically did the same error right here. We need to have that SF namespace we just need one more line of code and that is when we need to apply this to our actual window so window dot set view almost parameters and then the view which is just in our case view hopefully i'll spell right control c and we should have ourselves a camera that follows our player around and we do right on so this is working quite nicely i'd say but but i have found a problem with this method of using sprites to display everything on certain scaling. I'll show you what I mean in a quick second here. Alrighty, so this here is a bit more advanced version. You can see I've got background going. This stuff here is actually vertex arrays. Now you might be noticing at any minute now, okay, you might be just noticing like right there on the screen, like just like focus right there. You might be noticing there's like a little line something. Yeah, there's a little lines. And it's even worse when I'm not recording. You can see visible giant lines in there. It's just, it's a weird glitch. I know a way around the bug, I don't know how to solve the bug though. So, we're going to our next video, we're going to be getting into something called vertex arrays. You may have heard a bit about these before, these are essential. What a vertex array is basically, vertex array looks kind of like this. This is basically a vertex array. It's just, you plot out every single point, and then you get this awesome shape. 
Now, why this works so well is because it, uh, this is going to clean up a lot of glitches we've been having so far. Plus, it's actually, I believe it is more efficient and also this way we can deal with polygons. Right now, we've just been using squares, which I don't think there is a built-in polygon class for sprites. So, using a vertex array is going to be very beneficial. You can see it here in a second here that also some of this logic just doesn't seem to make sense. For example, if we had gravity, like what is this? We can't move down, but we're not colliding with anything, right? It just doesn't look right. I mean, we could redesign our character, but we're stopping glitch after glitch using this method. And there's actually a lot better method out there. Or I don't know, we might not be dealing with vertex arrays yet in the next video, because to use a vertex array, the way that SFML handles it, we need to use pointers and references. Next video, I'm going to be creating an entire video devoted to just pointers and references because pointers and references are essential in C++. Although, I mean, I wouldn't say they're essential. They're just going to make your life so much easier and your code runs so much faster. Like up to this point, we haven't actually been using any references or pointers, any memory management yet, but memory management is the strength of C++. Before you go, I'd appreciate it if you check out my animation channel and let me know what you think about it because it's my first time animating. That video honestly did take two weeks to complete. It says, because with animation, you have to draw every single frame. I, I definitely do enjoy animation a lot. Although it is difficult, I, art was actually my favorite subject in school. I'd always be drawing comics and whatnot. So again, I'd really appreciate it if you check out my animation channel. The name is Marty Mast, and there's a link down in the description. They'll take you right to my animation channel. That said, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll be seeing you guys next time. Agent Marshall Marty out.